And now there's another important point we want to discuss in regard to the fundamentals of transformers, and that's something that we want to talk about. It's called VA rating. Let's take a look at these two transformers first. They look the same. In other words, the wiring connections on these multi-tap primary transformers and the wiring on the secondary is exactly the same color code. So from a distance, they look like the same transformer. However, when you look closely, you're going to notice that there is a difference between the two of them. This particular transformer is rated at what we call 40 VA, and the other transformer is rated at what we call 20 VA. Now, what is a VA rating in relation to a transformer? Well, a VA rating, to put it simply, is nothing more than the amount of work that a transformer can do. VA stands for Volt Amp Rating, and what it boils down to is this. If I had a small furnace, for example, that all it was was an old standing pilot furnace, the VA rating of that transformer might only be 10. If I had another furnace, for example, that used electronic ignition and had more of a load on the low voltage side, we might move up to a 20 VA transformer. If we were working with a package unit air conditioner or a split system, though, that did both heating and cooling, we would likely be working with a 40 VA transformer. When we move up to heat pumps, it's possible that you might be working with a 60 or even a 65 VA transformer. The point I need you to understand here is that when you replace a transformer, double check to make sure that it has the right volt amp rating so that you're using the right replacement. Now the other type of transformer that we want to talk about is one that not only has multiple taps on the primary, but also multiple taps on the secondary, like this one right here. This particular transformer that you're looking at right here has not only those multiple taps on the primary that we showed you, but on the secondary side, it's capable of different voltages on the step down side. And now we'll go back to our simple schematic diagram to show you what we were talking about as far as a multi-tap secondary winding on the transformer. What we want to point out is that originally what we talked about is that this would be your 24 volt connection because that's the maximum that you could get. Now it's very possible though that this particular transformer would have a center tap on it which would mean that that would be capable of a 12 volt connection and then also there would be another connection that would give you a very small secondary which in many cases is only maybe two and a half or maybe three volts AC. And now what we want to do is we want to show you the proper procedure that you could follow when using an ohmmeter to test the secondary windings on this multi-tap transformer that we're telling you about on the secondary side. What we want to do is we want to begin by pointing out that on this particular transformer, blue is the common wire, and the other three wires are going to be wired into the transformer secondary depending on what type of secondary voltage you want to get out. So if we were to test for resistance, we're going to start with the common wire, which like we said is the blue one, and then we would go directly to the yellow wire. Now when we put our ohmmeter on the blue and the yellow wire in this particular instance, what you're going to notice is that we're going to get about 1.4 ohms resistance. That's because this is the 24 volt connections between the blue and the yellow. Now if we move on to testing between the blue and the black wire, we're going to get a different resistance, which is going to be just about 1 ohm resistance, and that's because this particular winding right here is what we call the 12 volt tap. In other words, we're only going to get 12 volts out rather than 24. Now if we switch over to testing between the blue and the white, what you're going to notice is that we get the lowest resistance reading that we've got on the secondary side. It's only a fraction of an ohm because we're only going to get two and a half volts out of that particular winding. And what we want to show you now is a simple drawing of a transformer that is in fact multi-tap as it's incorporated into a simple piece of equipment. We want to focus on this area right here. This is a multi-tap primary transformer and you'll notice that in this particular case right here it's showing the black wire as common, it's showing a blue wire as 208 volts, and it's showing red as the 230 volt connection. The point we want to make here is that you need to pay attention to each individual manufacturer's diagram so that you can identify the correct colors that are used originally and also make sure you double check your replacement transformer to make sure you're making the right connections. Now one more point that we want to make, even though it may not be shown in some cases, on the 24 volt side you may find a separate fuse protecting the control voltage system on HVAC equipment. We want to point out that you're supposed to find this fuse on the common wire on the secondary side of the electrical system. So what that means is, is if you had a piece of equipment that was totally dead, for example, and wouldn't run, one very simple troubleshooting question you could ask is, 
Is there a fuse on the 24 volt side of the electrical system? And if it's there, is it okay? All you have to do is locate the fuse holder on the common wire. For example, take a look at this transformer right here. We were working with it earlier and we mentioned that the blue wire was in fact the common wire. What that means is, is that's why we're going to find the fuse holder there. So all we have to do is locate the fuse holder, take the fuse out, and what I want you to understand is, is that in some cases you could do a visual inspection of the fuse to find out if it's okay. That's not the best way to find out. The best way to find out is, is to take an ohmmeter and put one lead on one side of the fuse and one lead on the other side of the fuse. And when you do that, you can take a look at your ohmmeter and you'll notice that it's going to show continuity. What that means is the fuse is okay. Now, if our meter had showed infinity or open line, it would mean that this fuse was open and keeping the unit from running. And now what we want to do is focus on a complete schematic diagram as we continue with our discussion on the fundamentals of control transformers. This particular diagram right here is of a furnace, and what I want you to understand is right in the middle is the symbol for the transformer. The point that we want to make here is that understanding transformers is an important beginning to the fundamentals of troubleshooting HVAC systems overall because the transformer itself, as you can see, the symbol is what makes up the entire diagram with the primary components shown here and the secondary components shown here. And that brings us to the end of our video presentation on the fundamentals of control transformers. We hope you've enjoyed it and we hope you've learned something from it. For information on more video training programs that are available, you can call Technical Training Associates at area code 520-625-6847 or you can visit the website at www.technicaltrainingassoc.com. This is Jim Johnson saying we'll see you next time. Thank you.